Okay, here we are back in Autoplay Media Studio, and I'm going to create a new project for this lesson. So I'm going to click on Create a New Project, select the blank project template here, and type Objects into the Project Name field, and click on Create Project Now. And actually, it's a little bit big, so I'm going to go ahead and size it down. So we'll go to Project Settings, choose Small from the Page Size Presets pull down menu. I'm going to go ahead and press OK. And there we are. Let's start taking a look at objects now. So if you haven't uh, seen this objects toolbar here, go to view toolbars and click on objects. If you can see it, go ahead and pull it off and bring it down into the middle so we can take a closer look. Now we've got a variety of objects here. Let's just take a look at what they are first. We've got a button object, label object, paragraph, image, video, macromedia flash, Internet Explorer web object, hotspot, input, list box, combo box, progress bar, and tree menu. So you can see there's a whole ton of stuff and you can actually share and create and uh, download plugin objects as well. But for now let's stick with our basic native objects here. Now objects basically all work in the same sort of a paradigm in, in that they have events and they have properties. So let's go ahead and create a button object now and we'll take a look at how that works. I'm going to click on the new button object icon and it brings up a gallery here and we can go through and take a look at what we've got. And when I find one I like, I'm going to go ahead and press OK and then I'm just going to bring that out to our stage. As you can see, it acts like an object. You can size it up, you can move it around, you can change the fonts, you can do all that kind of stuff. It has properties that you can affect. For example, here in the Properties pane, you'll see you have access to the font size, font alignment, the type of font, whether it's bold or italic, so on and so forth. And we can control all kinds of stuff from here. I'm just going to scroll down so you can see here, and it gives you control over the font colors. You can even change them for the different mouse states. So for example, for highlight here, let's go ahead and put in red, and that's going to show when the mouse is over the button, and so forth. Now those are the properties for this particular object. Let's take a look at the events. I'm going to double click on it and that brings up this dialog here. If I click on the script area here, you'll see that we've got four different tabs here. On click, on right click, on enter, and on leave. And these relate to how the mouse is interacting with this button. So for example when you click it, whatever actions are stored here in the on click event will be fired. So that's the basic gist of how buttons work. Buttons are basically put there to fire actions when they're clicked. The majority of the time you're going to be attaching actions to the on-click event for buttons. Now for different objects you can have different type of properties and different type of actions. So for example a video object, let's go ahead and click on that. You see there's a video here in our gallery and if we add it to the project I'll just go ahead and bring it out down here. Maybe I'll just size it down a little. Now if I double click on that, you'll see that it has properties that are more relevant to a video object. So for example, the button object had properties for font color, whereas the video object has properties for control buttons and slider. So each of the objects has different properties that are relevant to it. For example, an Internet Explorer web object will have a property for the URL and flash object will have a property for looping playback. So each of these has different properties that are available which are relevant to that technology and they also have events which are relevant. So if we double click on this video object again and go into the script tab, you'll see that we no longer have the same events that we had for the button object. Now we have some new stuff and it's more logical for a video object. For example, on stop, on finish, on pause. The web object, for example, might have events for uh, on navigate. So that's basically objects. They've basically got events and they've got properties, and this is how we can affect them. Objects are also, let's take a look here under the object menu, objects are also available in plugin format. So, for example, here we've got a media player plugin that's built right in. If we press OK, you'll see it makes a little object here and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of our video object move that media player object over here 
And basically any file that we could play in the Windows Media Player, we could load into this object here and put it right into our projects. So that's the basics of, of objects. We're not going to have time, obviously, to go through each and every object and examine the properties. If you have any specific questions, of course, you can meet me in the forum anytime, and I'm happy to help you. But that's the basics of how we can get started anyhow, adding objects and editing uh, their properties and so on and so forth. The only other thing that we'd like to take a look at here, I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that, get rid of that. Up here under the edit menu, you also have some other objects, object options rather. You can arrange them, you can unlock them, you can pin them and so forth. Let's take a quick look at that. I'm going to add another button object here. And I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to resize it. I'm going to actually bring that font size down a bit. I'm going to press Control D to duplicate it a few times. And now let's take a look at these other aspects of the objects. As you can see here, they're arranged in the Z order. That is to say, from front to back, in such a way that the one that's closest to us appears to be the topmost. What if we wanted to make this one the one in the middle, the topmost. We would go to the Edit menu and we would choose Arrange, Bring to Front. Or you could use the Control shift up shortcut. As you can see now, it's on top of all the other ones. So this is another aspect of objects that we have to be aware of, is that they exist um, on different levels, basically, and you can uh, sort of overlap them and uh, arrange them to create different functionality. Let's take a look at the Align function real quickly. If I select all of these buttons here, I'm just going to mix them up like this. And I go to the Align menu. You'll see I have a variety of options here where I can change their size, distribute and align them along different planes and so forth. Let's go ahead now and align them to the left. And then let's go ahead and distribute them vertically. And you can see it's a quick way to create an even button row that we can actually group together here by going to Edit, Group, and we can move that into place now as a group and then we have an option here under the edit menu to pin or lock those objects for example if we want to keep them in place and we don't want them to be selectable for the duration of our design uh, portion we can go ahead and lock them or if we want them to be selectable but not movable we can pin them so I'm going to go ahead and pin them as you can see now I can no longer move them but I'm able to select them so that's some other nifty aspects of objects about how we can arrange them how we can align them and how we can group them together for more convenient layout functionality as well as uh, for better runtime functionality for certain types of projects. So that's the basics of objects. Let's go ahead and go on to the next lesson now.